we've gotten it to where we feel confident with this team and this is who we're going to have and we're going to schedule that time around everyone's schedule. That makes it more difficult when we're here. Now we got to get it done. And sometimes that means 12, 14 hour days holding a 40 pound camera on your shoulder and making sure you don't miss anything. Oh, right there. oh my gosh, oh my god, that was incredible. Nice baby, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, look at that guy. That is a shark. That's the biggest fish I've ever caught. Woo. The Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. A lot has changed over the way that we've done this in the over the years. I mean, we started out with, you know, a single cameraman, mostly shooting from within the boat. Got him! Yeah, yeah baby! <laughs> yeah, how about that, bud? How about that? To upgrading the cameras, to upgrading the cameramen, to then having two cameras, two cameras, an underwater diver, two cameras, an underwater diver, two still photographers. And the thing has really grown as we've, you know, reinvested into this to increase the, the production value. It really grows into something that wasn't what we started with. And to others, the amount of stuff that we have to do to, to catch a fish on camera is way more than maybe they might expect. He's going to eat it. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. Good, good job, Tom. Nice job, dude. Wow. Wow. Nice job. You know what? For every one fish we catch on camera, if we were just out fishing on our own, we could probably catch 10. So that means it's 10 times more difficult to, to catch fish. The current's still going out. Where is it? Kind of like it's, I think it's ending and it's got a little wind against the tide. So would it be easier to nose in and uh, hold us? That wind's pretty strong right there, you know what I'm saying? Like, try to do that. That's easier for you if we can just kind of get close and stay on this side of them. Yeah, that, everything takes longer. I mean, instead of just running out there, seeing if any fish are there, you know, you've got to choose your spot to where you're going to see if any fish are there, then the camera boat's going to come up behind you, then everybody's going to get set, and then, you know, then you're going to take your pass through there to see if there are any fish there, and then now it's time to move. All the stuff has to go back, put away, especially if it's windy. Now you've got to put everything back. At, by that time, we could have checked three other spots mm -hmm. on a charter or, you know, on a regular day of fishing. and so. You know, I used to think of filming kind of like a tournament, like you really needed a great plan and you needed to stick to that plan. But I think that what I've learned is that filming is, is the opposite of a tournament. You need to have a good plan, but you might go there, check and see if, if there are any fish there, but the light is right and the guys are saying, hey man, if you could catch a fish right now, right. it would be awesome. And that's the, th I would say the greatest, you know, point of our evolution of our show was when Hop basically says, you know what guys, you don't need to catch 10 fish, you need to catch two fish and they need to be documented really well. Right. And our whole mentality shifted from tournament fishing of going and catching as many as we possibly can in a short period of time to taking our time and catching two fish and documenting it really, really well. Nice job, dude. Nice oh. job. Very nice, good catch. Oh. Nice. Look at that, man. He looked like a looked like somebody shot him in the air, and he just it's like a plank. Nice. Yes. What I'm most uh, thankful for, you know, is really the crew that we've developed. I mean, we've got Stevie D, uh, Steve Durstein, who is really top shelf uh, videographer. He does the PGA. He does, you know, all kinds of other outside gigs besides our stuff, and he is really, you know, one of the better cameramen in the world. Uh, it's our first time. It's our first time working together, so. And we've got Hop, who's our producer, editor, musical composer. He does everything, graphics, everything. So, you know, those two guys make an incredible team yeah. because they trust one another and they can communicate well enough to know that, hey, they got it. And so for us, it gives us the confidence to know that if we do catch something and we do wait long enough to where they're actually set up, 
that's getting covered. So once you build that team, man, it really does make it a lot easier, but it is not easy. I'm in, I'm on. Nice job, dude. Beautiful. That was incredible, man. We don't have a local cameraman that just, you know, hey, the fishing's good today, let's go out there. Um, we got guys, you know, hops in Little Rock, Arkansas. Steve's in Jacksonville, Florida. You know, we got people that have to come from all different places. We got to schedule the days. We got to pray for good weather. And we got to take advantage of the opportunities. So when we're out there, there's a uh, time crunch. We might have 10 days we're filming a week, whatever it is. We got to get her done. And, um, and so, yeah, you know, even though the weather's not perfect today, it's windy, um, we got to think, what can we do? It's not like we're just saying, oh, wow, it's a great day out here. Let's, let's call the camera guys and go right. film. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. I think a lot of times I get those questions. Um, oh, well, um, you know, the fishing's good. You guys, you know, the sailfish are biting right now. Why don't you guys go film? We can't yeah, do that. It's not that easy, you know, because Steve's in Hawaii filming the big break. And so we've gotten it to where we feel confident with this team and this is who we're going to have and we're gonna schedule that time around everyone's schedule. That makes it more difficult when we're here because when we're here, now we gotta get it done. And sometimes that means 12, 14 hour days holding a 40 pound camera on your shoulder and making sure you don't miss anything. You, ate, you almost ate it. Boom. Oh, nice job, Tom, you got him. Nice got job, dude, that, that was, was incredible. So awesome. That was so awesome. Nice job, dude. <laughs> God, I love that. <laughs> I want a bite. Keep, keep, keep pulling on him. Keep pulling on him. Oh man, I caught a swordfish. The Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Mercury. By Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. By Lorance, find, navigate, dominate. And by Costa Sunglasses, Motor Guide, and Power Pole. But you know, over the years, we've, we've had some really amazing things caught on camera. Um, you know, thousand pound hammerheads, multiple times doubles on thousand pound hammerheads, you know, doubles and, and on tarpon, triples on permit, so many things. We've, we've managed to get a grand slam on camera. Yeah, my, uh, my first ever. I mean, yeah. in all the years, you know, uh, fishing down here, I never caught a grand slam. Yeah, we've gotten, we've gotten double digit bonefish on camera. Oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> we've really, you know, had some amazing. So, what's things your what's happen. your favorite out of all the things we caught on camera? What, what would be the one the, thing you well, said was the, the coolest? The one thing that we could never replicate again, in my opinion, and and I just think that it's amazing that we did it once, was foul hooking a permit <laughs> on a um, on a swim bait. As soon, as, soon as, as it hit, hit the water, as Whoa. soon as it hit the water, that's crazy. I've right never, in that white hole, huh? I've never. I don't even know what this is, man. Here, uh, let's power pull down. Got to be a cooter, right? Get to it. Dude, I think I snagged this fish because, I mean, that happened as soon as it hit the water. Look at this. Wow. What in the world could this be? Look at that. Look at that. Unbelievable. It, I guess, I mean, do you think he actually went after it? Do you think it just no, landed on his back and he hooked it? go after it. So you literally just landed on his oh, back with no, a cast. They will eat something like that. You know, I think that's probably the, the craziest thing that's ever happened on camera. But, you know, other things from, you know, having uh, fish break off, catching the line, hooking it back on, going swimming, moving the line around, and catching that fish. Real, 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 real. Okay, Tom, got it. You're on. No way. No way. <laughs> no way. Just going through some of the the amazing links that we've gone to to actually catch some of these fish. I think that the first time that we ever went out and, and did the hammerhead thing was mm. really cool because be right you know, on my we, list. Thought, we thought, you know, but we didn't know maybe we could, catch we could one. do I've, it. I've, you know, I've seen them a hundred times down here eating my tarpon, never, never really tried to catch one, right. didn't know many people that have ever tried it. Um, so we were making it up as we go and, and also taking a risk of, of hey, uh, um, let's get all these guys on our limited schedule and our limited budget and 
go out here and try to catch one. And yeah. I had no idea if they'd react to the chum. I had no idea if they'd come up there. And I talk about being blessed. I had an idea that they would. Well, I'll tell you what. That was cool. Um, I think the single greatest film days that we've had were some of the Goliath grouper days where we got the amazing, unbelievable underwater where David is, is doing that underwater and it looks like something out of planet Earth. Um, you know, and we're watching the fish eat baits underwater. Come here, little boy. <clears throat> Hello. That's a good one. Hello, Mr. Biggle. Yeah, they are getting big alive. I think those are some of the best. I mean, what about you? Well, I would say, you know, if I had to pick one fish that, that I'd caught that was the coolest, probably that swordfish, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, totally different. Another, another first. That's amazing to me how many firsts we ha have done while we were filming. Because I guess, you know, Scott Walker, you know, he'd been, it was just when that daytime sword fishing was just starting to happen. And I'm hearing these rumors about guys going out in the day and catching swordfish was just totally unheard of. And, uh, and, and this is a guy that I totally trust. I mean, I made it for the guy. I understand. I watched him catch these fish. Um, and he's telling me, man, we go out there, we drop a bait down 2,000 feet, and we're going to get a bite. Like, is this about as far from something that keeps you up doing? I've wow. never done anything like this. I can tell you that. Those Rich. I, I had a hard time man, believing. I'll tell you what. The thing that was crazy about that to me is he said it's going to take 12 minutes to get to the bottom with an 8-pound weight. So we're using an 8-pound weight and it's taken 12 minutes to get to the bottom and it took less time to get a bite about four miles behind. there's a bite uh, we got a bite go. see that i no. saw that what that do i do is a bite. nothing he's, he's biting it he's biting it well there here he goes is. here he goes he's on there I, or, try, turn on hand a little bit just turn on a little bit there's something he's running he's running all right take the drag up take the drag up now look at him go look at him go he's running he's peeling line he's peeling line he's peeling line off the reel he got mad he got mad he's pretty big Beautiful. Yeah, I'm gonna stay back. I'm gonna oh my God, he's so beautiful. Oh, look at him in the water. That's a big fish, he's so guys. beautiful. How do you so? Look at that. Go. Need to go around the bow. Now keep 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 pulling on him. Keep pulling on him. I'm gonna get the tag stick now. Oh man, I caught a swordfish. That was really one of the coolest fishing experiences that I've ever had in my life. Um, but you know, the other things that I've enjoyed is I've enjoyed taking the show on the road and and the times that we've spent in Louisiana and, and just having some amazing times with, with good friends and, and really some of the guests, you know. I mean, some of the days that we've been able to spend and some of the, some of the people that we've been able to fish with, from professional mixed martial arts fighters like Nate Quarry and Paul Buentello to, you know, American heroes. I mean, people that actually served and, and sacrificed for us, you know, like Greg and Diane, then we had Mike Mednaski and and we've had uh, the soldiers from Project Healing Waters and Under Armour. I mean, you hate to say who's best, but I think the most memorable guest for me was Kyle Maynard. You Amazing. know, he is probably the most motivational person that I've ever been around. He doesn't consider that his physical disabilities are disabilities. All right, hang on, big boy. I'm hanging in there. I got technology on my side. That's right. <laughs> Look at him. That's a good looking shark there. The Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yeti Coolers, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. And by Loadmaster Boat Trailers, Marine Formula Stable, Plano, and King Sailfish Mounts. I'm sure that from the outside, it seems like it would just be a lot of fun to edit a saltwater experience show. But really, no editing project for any kind of nationally televised show is ever going to be a walk in the park. There's just so many facets to it that make getting it done and delivered a lot of hard work. For anything I'm working on, whether it's a saltwater experience or a documentary or a commercial, the difference between an edit that's too early or too late for me is literally down to one frame. So when you're shooting for that kind of precision with this amount of work to be done, you have to get up early every day 
and stay up until 3 a.m. every night during that four to five month season if you're going to deliver a quality production on time. There's actually a lot of time spent each day as a producer dealing with the administrative concerns of the show. And as a composer, I spend a ton of time and work creating new music for the show or reformulating existing stuff. And as far as being an editor, part of the reason it's so time consuming is that I have 15 to 20 hours of material for each episode. And I have to take that and find the pieces that will make up the best possible story arc that will last only about 20 minutes. The key points of that story arc are usually the fish that Tom and Rich catch, and a lot of people tune in just for that. That is so cool. That was... But how did we get to those points? What did we do or discover that led us there? What interesting things might we have seen along the way? How do we build from there? What more can we learn? And how do we resolve the story and allow the audience to feel satisfied that they've gotten a good sense of the whole experience? So there is a thought process. I mean, the stories we're documenting are not complicated. We're not trying to unravel the secrets of the universe. We're just trying to have a fun day on the water. But when you consider that it's 20 hours of real, unacted, unscripted, basically documentary footage, and it has to be 20 minutes, uh, editing that can feel like you're trying to unravel the secrets of the universe. Especially when it's 3 a.m. and you've been running a miles for about 20 hours straight. One thing that's cool about doing the saltwater experience is that Tom and Rich afford me the creative license to do some things that you might not find in a program like this. And so we've done a lot of stories about very interesting environmental and conservational projects uh, about people whose often important stories might not otherwise be told. Uh, we've even done stories about museums that actually don't have a lot to do with fishing outside of the fact that they're located in the Keys. So those things, in my opinion, keep the show interesting and different, and they go along with the idea that this is a show less about fishing and more about the experience of being in a given place with certain people. And so you have an experience, and you have salt water, The Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Hox K, the only key you'll need. By Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. And by Corrosion Block, Under Armour, Scott Fly Rods, and Fraybill Fishing Gear. One of the coolest things I'd say that we've done over the years is take our kids fishing. We've been doing it from the start, um, you know, and I, to look back at probably our second season or when we took our kids yeah. fishing, and I look at, I remember seeing Austin um, driving the big 36 there. You got your boys out there that are just, you know, this big, and, you know, I can't remember what, he's two and a half years old, three, you know, and then this last season, you know, he's eight, and he just caught this big uh, snook there, and, and to see your boys go from, you know, you got Turner now who, <laughs> he's as big as you. Yep, Turner's 14, Hayden's 12, and then don't forget Hannah. We've had Hannah and Reed out there too. And um, yeah, the kids, the kids are a big part of it because they're a big part of it to us. You know, it's a big part of our life. It's a big part of our family. And you know, to be able to look back on, on them fishing and how they grow and how they've grown over the years, I think is something that maybe they don't value right now, but I think that they'll look back on these shows when they're my age and just be like you know that was really cool you know we were we were part of it and over the years you know we've been able to do that and i just hope that we have you know helped somebody to to figure out how to take their kid fishing and uh strengthen that bond between parent and child no, that guy look right, he made yeah. a big look wave. at them they're chasing they're chasing them out of the water cool. look, look at that all the chasing, are chasing the bullet out of the water that's awesome see him that chasing is the so bullet. awesome not many people get to see this yeah you're right Rito, what do we got there? Red fish on my wall! Bring him to the other side there, Reed. Red fish, let's go this way. That was pretty cool, huh? Watch him come in there. Yeah. There you nice go. Nice job, man. Hayden Rowland! <laughs> Shark Man Turner! Shark Man, you're good, next, buddy. Good job, boys. Good job. Good job right, man. Just put him in there and turn him up current there. And... Turner, you may have a future in this. <laughs> there you go, buddy. <laughs> 
to the right. Nice Look at what happened snook, here, baby. Reed. Austin. Austin, that is one of the biggest snook I've ever <laughs> seen a kid catch. <laughs> How about that, that man? That is totally. Two days ago, I did a great show with the kids. A lot of fun. My boy, my, my boy asked me this morning, Dad, can we watch the show today? Yeah. You know, and, I, and it was like, and this is my eight-year-old kid who's very intelligent. He had, he didn't realize, and I hear this question all the time, you know, oh, you're filming today, when's it gonna air? Um, you know, this isn't like live TV or something. This isn't like the news. It's not edited that, that night. Um, usually, you know, we're talking about a lag of at least a month, if not six months ahead, um, that we're filming some of this stuff. So, so uh, you know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And, and I, you know, I can't tell you how blessed we have been to, to have Hop, Stevie D, you know, these guys that have come in, David taking stills, you know, other people that have gotten involved to, to help it take it to that level. If it was just you and I out there, um, <laughs> we'd be good. Everybody wave. Everybody wave at him. You guys are gonna be on TV. Stay on target. Stay on target. Yeah, you get that. You get the first one. Exactly. Man, let's see.